is CGTN, China Global Television Network. In 2013, President Xi Jinping proposed the Belt and Road Initiative to enhance the development of participating countries through closer ties. And now China is set to host the Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation to discuss ways to make this initiative a reality. The high-level forum also hopes to create fresh energy for pursuing interconnected development. And as Foreign Minister Wang Yi stated in his trip to the continent earlier this year, with a deepening of cooperation, the African continent will get more development benefits. So as parties gather to discuss ways to maximize on outcomes, how will these benefits reposition Africa in the changing global economic situation? And what key concerns should African leaders place on the table at the Belt and Road Forum? I'm Beatrice Marshall. Welcome to Talk Africa. China has already invested more than 50 billion US dollars in countries along the Belt and Road since the initiative was first proposed in 2013. It has won support from over 100 countries and international organizations with nearly 50 cooperation agreements having been signed between China and various governments. Let's take a brief look at what the initiative aims to achieve. The Belt and Road Initiative is aimed at building a trade and infrastructure network that links Asia to Europe and Africa. Three years after the initiative was proposed, President Xi Jinping said the progress and results have been greater than expected. More than 100 countries and international organizations have participated in the initiative, and China has signed agreements with more than 50 countries on jointly building the routes and production capacity. She said the initiative is an opportunity to rebalance and stabilize the global economy as it promotes transnational connection and improves cooperation in trade and investment, as well as in international capacity and equipment manufacturing. He outlined some priorities such as infrastructure construction, optimal use of resources, core technology research and development, and financial innovation. She also encouraged Chinese companies to invest in countries along the routes of the Belt and Road Initiative. He also welcomed the investments from these countries. The Belt and Road refers to the Silk Road Economic Belt, a land-based route from China, Central Asia and Russia to Europe, and the 21st century maritime Silk Road, which goes through the Strait of Malacca to India, the Middle East and East Africa. The routes involved around 60% of the world's population, who creates some 30% of the world's total gross product. Now, in order for Africa's participation in the Belt and Road Initiative to be a success, infrastructural development will have to take center stage. And China's development assistance in this regard has already played a significant role in realizing the continent's economic growth. On the sidelines of the annual Africa Development Week in Dakar, Senegal, earlier in the year, I spoke to Abdallah Hamdok from the Economic Commission for Africa to find out more. Dr. Hamdok, thank you very much for your time. First of all, I want to find out your thoughts about uh, what you have found um, uh, as your priorities. What do you think are the pressing issues for Africa today in this century? Well, thank you very much for having me. I think the most important issue for Africa today is probably the integration agenda. Africa with its fragmented small economies cannot move forward if we are not able to address the integration agenda, which brings in not only issues of trade, but addressing the huge deficit of the infrastructure gap, both hard and soft infrastructure, coupled with working on human development. No nation in the world can develop without addressing the human development aspect. So these are probably, if we could address these two main issues, maybe linked to also finance, partnerships with our partners outside the continent that can move our development agenda solidly forward. 
We are looking though at integration and, and Africa has been talking about regional integration for a number of uh, decades now and, uh, and they have been talking about boosting the regional economic uh, uh, community so that eventually there will be a, a economic integration, political integration and so forth. What do you think is a stumbling block though towards realizing that? You know, the discussion and the debate on regional integration in Africa, we have won that debate. The, the agreements are between those who want to go very fast and those who want to go fast enough. But the stumbling block in Africa not fulfilling its promise of the integration, the first one is the major infrastructure deficit, deficit in, in energy, in transport, in ports, all the infrastructure. We need to address this. Of course, we need to look at other issues in the integration, free movement of people and goods, the uh, convergence of macroeconomic policies, issues of uh, trade agenda in terms of uh, tariff and uh, non-tariff barriers and all that. But the m top most important issue is the infrastructure. Do you know that by addressing transport alone, that will reduce the cost of trade in Africa by 40%. We're looking now, though, at uh, China's input into this because uh, China has become one of the biggest um, infrastructure investors on the continent. And China has also been talking about uh, building uh, connectivity, rails and, and, uh, and, and roads and the seaport from Cape to Cairo. How is Africa leveraging this? I think, you know, the, the, the Chinese engagement with Africa is an extremely, not only important, it is welcome because... China is a friend to Africa. They work with us historically. These are solid allies and friends. But more than that, if you look at the continent today, there is not a single country or group of countries or regions that are benefiting from the Chinese involvement in building infrastructure in this continent. You will find it in, uh, in terms of uh, roads, energy, big projects, dams, and all that. I think the Chinese efficiency in delivery it is very much welcome in the, in the continent. And China provides us an opportunity to look at the Chinese experience itself, the model, which shows us in record time, you can uplift millions of people out of poverty. China being developed very recently, tell us we can also emulate what China has, has, has done and benefit from that experience in looking at our own future and development. One of the issues that, uh, of course, China has mentioned now is that uh, Africa is going to be part of the One Belt, One Road uh, initiative. How do you think that uh, uh, this will open up uh, global trade, particularly for Africa? You see, the, the current intra-Africa trade stands at very low level of 10 to 12 percent. And the main impediment in this is the high cost of uh, doing trade within the continent. The main issue about it is the issue of uh, infrastructure, transport essentially, and, 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 and energy. With China intervening in this, this will go a long way in, in moving inter-Africa trade probably in a decade to 40-50%. So in that sense, it brings the important issue of the value addition, allow us to uh, manufacture our uh, products rather than continue the current practice of dig and export of our commodities and exporting them raw with very little impact on employment, creating the decent jobs and all that. So this, the intervention in the infrastructure project create so many multipliers in the economies and the benefits can, can be forward, back forward, linkages and all this. It's, it's, it's huge. Looking back, though, at um, uh, one of the major issues that, that, that has been hampering um, Africa's infrastructural development has been the whole question of funding. Now, there is talk of a deficit up to 2020 that Africa needs about $100 billion a year to meet its um, infrastructural needs and that Africa can only raise um, a percentage of that. What are the alternative um, models of funding for Africa? Though? Where is Africa getting the money? Is Africa actually starting to bridge its infrastructural gap, particularly with the advent of uh, Chinese infrastructure support? This is indeed one of the major challenges in terms of 
funding development. Africa need to look at innovative finance by way of addressing what are the available sources of funding. I would like to believe the major probably source of funding Africa should look internal to look at domestic resource mobilization and there is a huge opportunity in this area whether you are looking at uh, pension fund, the reserves of uh, the central banks, the remittances from um, African abroad but also looking at uh, tax revenue and improving in this area. Having done so well in this, that could be leverage against FDI, whether it is public or private, and providing the uh, requisite climate that would allow us to attract the foreign direct investment to come into the continent. So I think there is ample avenues and opportunities we can leverage this with funding from our uh, partners including China. China provides us very generous soft loans and uh, uh, grants and all that which can benefit the continent a lot. Dr. Hamdok, thank you very much. You're welcome. And we are going to take a short break here, but when we come back, my expert guests will help unpack Africa's contribution to the Belt and Road Forum. Stay with us. beneficial road of interconnection has spread before us. The Silk Road Economic Belt and 21st Century Maritime Silk Road begins with overland railways and sea lanes in China, connecting trade routes throughout Asia, Africa and Europe, and will directly affect billions of people across the world. It's planned as one of the largest and most comprehensive development projects in human history. As it progresses, it will improve infrastructure all along the route. A network of highways, railways, ports, as well as facilities for energy, healthcare and education. It aims to provide assistance in areas where it is desperately needed, allowing isolated regions to develop together and to facilitate investment, trade and cultural exchange. Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank and the Silk Road Fund are already providing financing and opportunities remain for investors from the private sector. The Belt and Road Initiative is all about opportunities to grow, to build and to prosper together. The road that links us all. Welcome back to Talk Africa. And now to offer further insights into the Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation and the opportunities it presents for Africa, I have expert guests standing by. In Johannesburg, Dr. Bob Wakesa, he's a postdoctoral fellow at the University of the Witwatersrand in Cairo. Sameh Rashid, he's a researcher at the Ahram Center for Strategic Studies. And in Beijing, a current affairs commentator, Victor Gao. Thank you all for joining in the conversations now. Let's look at what's happening today. And one of the biggest stories today is China's One Belt and One Road initiative. And this could transform global trade. So, Victor, let's start from the very beginning, particularly for those uh, watching from outside Asia. What exactly is the One Belt and One Road initiative? Thank you very much for having me. I think the One Belt, One Road is a very major, unprecedented 
development initiative uh, proposed by China, which need to be interfacing with all the countries along the One Belt, One Road. Up to now, more than 70 countries are already involved uh, in this One Belt, One Road initiative. It's mostly a Eurasian continental concept, but it also spills over very much into North Africa and Eastern Africa. And then gradually, it is gaining momentum and more countries are joining in this One Belt, One Road initiative. Now, the One Belt, One Road initiative is very much focused on building up infrastructure and connectivity, enabling goods and services and people to uh, travel at greater speed with greater efficiency. And this will help many countries to actually alleviate poverty, to boost their economy, and treating you know, very large uh, geographical regions as a coherent entity and become more meaningful and more focused in the economic development in the years and decades to come. This is truly an unprecedented development initiative. Right, uh, an unprecedented initiative. Uh, Bob, uh, that initiative is obviously not confined to geographical locations. So uh, for Africa, is Africa already a part of this initiative though? And how significant is Africa as a part of it? No, definitely Africa is a very much part of the one Build, One Road initiative. Uh, because if uh, you go back in terms of uh, history, uh, the ancient Silk Road uh, came all the way to East Africa, you know, through the Indian Ocean. Uh, some 500 years ago, you know, Chinese sailors made it to uh, the ports of uh, Lamu, the ports of, Moga of Mogadishu, and ports in Djibouti, and so forth. So from a historical perspective, the One Build, One Road initiative is indeed part of Africa. Uh, and, and in addition to that, in, the, in current terms, there have been many comments made publicly about the involvement of uh, Africa in the initiative with specific reference, for example, to the ports of uh, Mogadishu, Mombasa, Bagamoyo, Dar es Salaam, Maputo, Durban on the East African Sea board as being uh, as being the you know the ports of call for the entry of uh, the Silk Road the maritime Silk Road as it were onto the road uh, in terms of the terrestrial uh, Silk Road um, right. in, in terms of uh, then its landing on the African continent and and in in terms of um, uh, its importance in fact for the African continent it is that it actually fits jigsaw puzzle with the Africa Union's in, in objective of an integrated continent. Right. Let, let me just bring in, in Sami Rashid Premier, here uh, uh, for a moment uh, because I want to get to come closer home and to exactly where the, uh, uh, the, the road will be having its entry point into Africa. Egypt is a key focal point. What is in it for Egypt, Sami Rashid? Well, uh, first of all, let, let me tell you something about Africa and, and the Belt and Road uh, Initiative. Africa ha have, uh, has some concerns about it. Africa should be worried of being in a low grade in this initiative. Africa is geographically and economically and technologically is a long distance away from China and its neighborhood. So I think Af Africa in the next conference, in, in the, the next meeting in Beijing, should uh, uh, should draw China attention to this point and uh, uh, this is a very important point. About your question about Egypt, I think Egypt is already uh, an important component uh, of the initiative, not only because it's strong relations with China or its um, uh, economic ambitions, I think Egypt has some potentials and, and some uh, capabilities that could make it a, a key energizer for the initiative uh, Egypt could be a central logistic point uh, between South Africa or the, uh, the southern uh, part of Africa and Europe. I mean that, uh, let me tell you an example, uh, we have now uh, a highway is worked on, a highway from Alexandria to Cape Town, and also we have in Suez Canal some services projects, reassembling the cargo and so on. And so I think that Egypt had some capabilities to, to input to be a, a partner in this initiative. Not only Egypt, uh, by the way, Egypt, I think, uh, and South Africa and Nigeria right. as well. Uh, those three countries, specific three countries, can be the uh, key energizers 
in this initiative. Right. Uh, Victor, just in reaction to uh, Samir Rashid's sentiments about the vulnerability of Africa, so in terms of the One Belt, One Road initiative itself for countries outside of China, how is it going to work? How is that connectivity going to work? I would say the One Belt, One Road initiative is good for all these countries involved in Africa, in Asia, in Europe and eventually also in other continents. But for people and countries in Africa, uh, which are very much fragmented for historical reasons, uh, there is actually no meaningful, well coherent infrastructure uh, network in Africa in terms of uh, well developed highway system or railway system or even port system or even airport system. Therefore, I think the One Belt, One Road initiative definitely will create a lot of good urgently needed spillover into Africa, helping African countries and brothers and sisters in Africa to really build up their infrastructure and connectivity. And in terms of infrastructure, we are not just talking about roads and highways and airports and seaports. It also includes financial infrastructure as well as internet cyberspace infrastructure. And therefore, I would say, with significant investment and cooperation and beefed up infrastructure and connectivity, in all shapes and forms, it will be easier for African countries and corporates and people to move around and also to ship around their goods and services as well as their minerals, etc. So right. everyone will benefit from this new excitement of connectivity and infrastructure rollout in Africa. Bob, and, and that is the question, though, because uh, with that lack of coherent infrastructure in Africa at the moment, though, where does Africa fit in here in terms of the global trade in relation, of course, to the One Belt, One Road? Yeah, I think Africa fits in uh, pretty well uh, because essentially Africa is one of the uh, regions of the world that is ill-connected to the rest of the world. And, and because essentially the One Belt, One Road initiative is also globalization in, in, in a sense, it means that the involvement of Africa will actually make sure that Africa intersects with the rest of the world better. You know, through, for example, the road systems that uh, the road and rail systems that will emerge, the ports that will be developed, Africa can then be able to ship out its exports to the rest of the world and therefore overcome the poor. Uh, you know, trade connectivity with the rest of the world. I, additionally, uh, the, the One Belt, One Road will, uh, you know, uh, the African dimension of the One Belt, One Road initiative will mean that Africa can actually trade more with itself uh, because we'll be able then as an Africa, the African continent to right. learn from China on how it has been able to connect itself internally and therefore be able to ship goods and services and people around the continent and therefore improve the intra-Africa trade which currently just starts at uh, paltry 18%. Uh, compared to the connectivity of, of, of other regions of the world. Therefore, the One Belt, One Road initiative is very important for Africa indeed. Right. Samir Rashid, though, how, how do you hope that Africa can deal with this whole question of lack of a coherent infrastructure? Well, uh, first of all, let me agree with my uh, excellent colleagues uh, in Beijing and Johannesburg. And uh, let me tell you that uh, this initiative uh, ha should take a prerequisite step before uh, repositioning Africa in the global economy, it should reproduce and, and, and restructure the, the African economy body in general. And, and then it should change, I, 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 and I think it will happen, it will change the perception of the world to Africa. Up till now, many countries in the world perceive Africa as only a, right. a, a consuming market for uh, the, the, the big powers, but I think that it, it should be uh, more than that. It should be a, a, a place of, of investment. It should be also a connectivity point between the, the, the two parts of the, of the, of the world. I, I think, uh, in a sense, like uh, your guest said, uh, this initiative is a new version of globalization, but not exploitative, not a colonial one like the American and Western globalization. I think this is a partnership, I can call it a partnership, not a dictatorship, globalization version of China. Right, Victor, uh, this is a new concept of uh, globalization, according to Sam Samir Rashid there. So 
compared to the rest of the world or to the Western world in particular, uh, they seem to be um, heading towards more nationalistic protectionism uh, uh, policies there, whereas China seems to be opening up a bit more, particularly with the initiative. What are your thoughts on that? Well, definitely. I think uh, in our own experience, 40 years ago in China, we actually did not have meaningful roads or railway system. Now China has probably one of the best networks of highways and railways, high-speed railways, seaports, airports, etc., you name it. Internet in China is highly developed. And therefore, the Chinese people and the Chinese corporates over the past four decades have truly benefited from the enhanced uh, connectivity and infrastructure network. This is why China wants to share this experience with the rest of the world throughout the One Belt, One Road initiative so that countries and people in other parts of the world can do similar things and beef up their infrastructure and benefit from higher level of connectivity. This definitely will stimulate industrialization, it will enhance manufacturing, and it will contribute to higher level of globalization. China is a firm believer of globalization, and we do not believe any country can really achieve economic benefits by hiding behind artificial natural, national walls. And even though there are ups and downs in the process of globalization, this is a mega trend. And any country which want to fight against globalization may actually be left by the roadside eventually. And I think many countries in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, in Latin America, even in uh, North America, countries like Mexico and Canada, uh, want to join this great excitement of building up infrastructure, building up connectivity. The Canadians, for example, want to build up the Pacific Gateway project. And if other countries in other continents can believe that they can benefit from this uh, infrastructure connectivity, why shouldn't countries and our brothers and friends and sisters in Africa? This makes eminent sense and I think the logic is a simple one. It just needs coordination and a piling up of all kinds of financial resources, human resources, manufacturing capacities to make this dream coming true. Right. Uh, Bob, I do want to get your thoughts on the uh, upcoming high-level forum of the uh, One Belt, One Road initiative forum that will be held in uh, Beijing. What do you think Africa should be bringing to the table? There are going to be uh, a number of delegations coming from the continent. What do you think they should be bringing to that table? No, I think African uh, leaders and policymakers should actually arrive at uh, that conference very well prepared. They need to actually look at the vision of the One Bill, One Road initiative, the policy that was developed by China's National Development and Reform Commission in 2015, and see how it intersects firstly with the African Union Agenda 2063 in terms of particularly infrastructure, because infrastructure is actually the big deal here. Number two, the African countries at individual levels need to look at their national policies and their strategic plans and see where and how they fit into the One Belt, One Road initiative so that they don't just arrive at the conference to do, you know, talking, but indeed to, 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 to uh, make tangible and uh, well thought out uh, proposal strategies going forward. I think it's very important that Africans look at this as a great opportunity because the whole idea of, an, uh, of a belt is that it creates a development corridor. It is not just a road or a railway that passes through a, a region or an area, but alongside this infrastructure will be many other developments, including in the cultural and political sphere. Right, gentlemen, thank you very much for your insights. And that's all we have time for this week. But thank you to my guests for their insights. In Johannesburg, Dr. Bob Wakesa, postdoctoral fellow at the University of the Witwatersrand. In Cairo, Sameh Rashid, he's a researcher at the Ahram Center for Strategic Studies. And in Beijing, current affairs commentator Victor Gao. And remember, you can join the conversation online through Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. And do join us again next week for more Talk Africa. Goodbye.